Hey Yous World, I am back with another video. Today I'm going to be covering a topic I usually do not cover. I talk about my dogs and I know many of you are pet owners as well and true to my channel title, Somehow Adulting, as an adult I learned to take better care of my pets because they're kind of like my children. I know many of your fur babies are children to you as well. So I want to talk about and answer the question, is pet insurance worth it? Because it's a lot of money to have pets nowadays, right? And this is kind of self-serving, I know, because over the years, I've had a lot of friends, family, coworkers, boyfriends, coworkers all reach out to me because, you know, they asked me the question on how do pet insurance work and is it worth it? What should I do? What is the best way to go about it, right? So I kind of want to just sum it up in a quick video to send out to all of my friends. So if you guys are watching this or coworkers, acquaintances are watching this, this is for you. And of course, for all of my viewers out there, I hope this is helpful, helpful to you. So let's just get into it. Well, to answer the question right off the bat, it is 110% worth it to me at least because of the costs associated when, of course, if you have health insurance for you know your kids, yourself, why wouldn't you have it for your pets, right? And vets, as much as I love them and worship my vets, but they can gouge you, like literally gouge you <laughs> because they play with your emotions. And of course, you want to do the best for your dogs. But sometimes you just have to logic through what makes the most sense. What really brought me to go down the rabbit hole and look for pet insurance is because my first Corgi named Corgi. <laughs> um, yes, I know how ironic that is. I cried for three days straight because I had to put him down when he turned eight, around eight years old, and he had kidney failure, right? This is a couple years out of college. I took him to the ER. He wasn't eating, and that dog literally would eat anything. Um, if he didn't want to eat, I was devastated because something was wrong with him, right? So obviously, we took him to the ER in the middle of the night, and we basically come to the conclusion that we had to put him down because the ER doctor was like, hey, this is going to cost a lot of money. My boyfriend and I were just like, money's not an issue. We're making money now. But we had no idea how astronomical the you know fees are going to be, the medical costs to keep my corgi alive, right? And they basically said something along the lines of to get him into a stable condition, it was $10,000. And then from that point forward, he has to go on dialysis every two weeks, which is a couple grand. And we were just like, oh, we had no idea how much this would have been. Q, do you, can you stay? Can you sit down? Okay. Bye. This, Q is about to turn 13 and she's still bouncing around the house and I take very good, good care of her, right? So to continue my story, we basically was just like, okay, maybe if we could do like, you know, a credit card or just to do anything we can to keep him alive. The ER doctor was just like, they saw we were a bunch of kids, right? And he's like, honestly, like, it's not a good life for him. Not to get really depressing with this video, but I'll get to, to the actual important stuff. To, to be real with you, the d ER doctor said that he's not going to live a good life because he's going to be in a state of fogginess because your kidneys are supposed to, you know, eliminate the toxins in your body, right? And it works the same thing with dogs. If you don't have your kidneys in full, you know, function, full cylinders, so to speak, he's going to live in a state of fog and that's not something you want for him as, you know, as well. So he recommended that we put him down. So again, I cried for three days straight because I felt down in my heart that I didn't do everything I could for him, right? So again, Coming back to the topic of pet insurance and how I've utilized it, I'll give you two options. Obviously, please do your own research. I'm sharing my experience so that you can learn and grab, you know, at least one or two points and apply it in your life um, for your own pets and see if it would work out for you, right? So there are two sections to this. The first part is going to be pet insurance. The second portion is preventative methods, preventative wellness, whatever you want to call it, right? So let's just get into the first portion of it. When it comes to pet insurance, I personally use nationwide. Obviously, there are a lot of different options out there. What you really want to look for are a couple of things. Number one, what it, what deductible, if I can talk. For me, using the nationwide, it is $250 deductible. Obviously, you can go higher or lower, but we chose the $250 deductible, and it covers up to 90% of your medical cost, which is great, right? 
and what you want to look in the fine print for any med- pet insurance that you look for um, is do they cover ER visit, you know, doctor visit cost, right? Every time you visit a vet, there is a doctor's visit and that costs, you know, anywhere from $80 to $200 something dollars, right? A regular vet probably hangs out around the $80 to $120 and then the ER doctors can go up to $200 something dollars, right? Because they're open 24-7, so you want to make sure the pet insurance that you look for are, is going to cover the doctor's visit. Some of them I've signed up for and canceled because they didn't cover the doctors. So if you're going to the doctor, you know, for checkups and et cetera, et cetera, that could rack up the cost a lot, right? So you want to make sure you cover that. And you want to make sure that there's no limits, right? So for nationwide, there are limits to certain medical conditions, whether it's a broken tooth, whether it's a broken arm. There are maximums to each condition, but there is no unlim- there's no limit in how much is the max payout. There are certain medical uh, insurance, pet insurance, that will have maximum of $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 a year. What if your dog has multiple issues that are completely different throughout the year and you're maxed out at $10,000? You, you want to make sure you avoid that. So that's the reason why I went with Nationwide instead. And stay till the end of the video so I can kind of do the rough math of how much money you would be spending every year versus what you would spend without pet insurance and kind of just budget what your um, annual cost is going to be or even monthly cost is going to be, right? So to give you an example of how I utilized uh, the pet insurance for Q, the one that just jumped off and said bye to you. Um, she's about to turn 13. Again, she's just, she's a she's a troublemaker. She still can. She literally still gets in trouble all the time. And I still love her to bits. And she everybody thinks that she is a two year old dog, even though she's almost 13 years old. So so the example happened when she went for a routine check and they, the vet found that she had two broken molars. So that happens when you give your dog hard, you know, chews or anything like wood, they chew on wood, just avoid giving your dogs any uh, hard, you know, toys or anything like that, because that can crack their tooth. And that's what happened to her because I didn't know, right. Um, so she had two exposed molar with pulp, right. And that could either get infected or it can't get infected. So during her routine cleaning, the doctor said there are two of them, he recommended that we extract them both. We ended up only extracting one of them because she was under anesthesia too long and her blood pressure was dropping. So we only extracted one after the teeth cleaning. He sent her home, said that, hey, you know, nothing could happen or the pulp can, uh, the exposed pulp can get infected, which eventually, I think after a couple months, it did get infected. I literally woke up, took her downstairs, was about to feed her. I didn't really look at her. And then all of a sudden I looked up and saw her face. It was blown up half of her face was blown up I freaked out and took her to the ER immediately they scheduled uh, the extraction gave her antibiotics and that cost about fifteen hundred dollars this was a couple years ago I can't imagine what that would cost today but this was a couple years ago and because I have pet insurance I ended up paying only $150, uh, excuse me, $400 because of the deductible. We hadn't hit our deductible at that point. So it ended up being uh, $400. But anything after that, we, we get reimbursed the 90% of anything that happened to her. So that was a lot of money. So the next thing was that she decided to tear, well, it's not really her fault. The dog's being a dog, right? She decided to tear her ACL um, while we were outside playing ball. So she started limping around. And we schedule the TPLO, which is the procedure to, to fix her, you know, ACL, quote unquote, I guess like the equivalent in our, of our ACL, I think. Um, the TPLO cost $6,500. And this was, again, three to four years ago in Chicago. I imagine that those prices have gone up to at least $7,000. It was $6,500. We would have had to pay out of pocket if we didn't have pet insurance. Now, that obviously was maxed out. So insurance co- took care of $3,500. So we ended up paying $3,000 for her to have her surgery. I cried that day when I <laughs> dropped her off at the, the specialist who did the TPLO. Bawled my eyes out in the parking lot because I, know, I don't think I've ever left her somewhere. I don't do dog hotels or anything. We usually have a friend watch 
Toby and Q. And I, ne- I don't think I've ever left her overnight somewhere, you know, unfamiliar to me, so to speak, right? So those are just two examples of how I utilize pet insurance. And when she first started pet insurance, it was about, I want to say 50 to $70 a month. Now it has gone up to $135 a month, which again, is completely worth it to me because of all of the experience that I, I had, imagine how much money I would have spent um, on her getting her, you know, medical needs attended to, right? And that's, again, not even including all of the random things that she did throughout the years. <laughs> um, those doctors visit alone would have destroyed us. So a lot of pet insurance companies also offer wellness plans, which is basically another, you know, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's $50 a month to keep up with the shots, to keep up with the flea and tick medications and all of that. Uh, For me, I decided to pass on that with Nationwide because I did the math. It wasn't worth it to me, right? So what I did instead, again, this is the second portion of, and to me, a well-rounded package of taking care of your dog's medical needs is using Banfield. You don't have to use Banfield. Banfield is just what's close to me, and usually they're attached to a PetSmart. But I know Petco also has a, and I'm sorry for those of you who are international viewers this is more uh, dedicated to all my u.s viewers but if you're living in a country that doesn't offer these services for your pets and most of the time a lot of america charges so much money for pets like maybe you don't even need it in your own country because it's actually reasonably priced uh, over where you live so comment down below how much do you spend on your pets when it comes to visiting doctors etc etc because we would probably cry looking at what you're paying versus what we're paying. <laughs> so in any case, um, when it comes to uh, PetSmart, I think they started their own program called Vetco, very similar to what Banfield has to offer. And I've been using Banfield for years. Um, basically, it's a monthly subscription of 30 to $40, depending on where you are. And they cover every, biannual checkups cover blood work, they cover fecal exams, they cover all of the shots, and of course, teeth cleaning, depending on what package you you select. And I remember when I didn't use Banfield, every time I go visit a doctor, it's $150. Then it's the shots and everything. That's another $250. I'm walking away spending $400, you know, a year just on regular stuff, right? That's not even including anything else. So Banfield um, for $30 to $40, that's including teeth cleaning, x uh, I don't know if they do x-rays, I don't think do x-rays, but normal stuff, right? And if you take that math, and of course, teeth cleaning by itself, I was just watching a, a reel with somebody the other day saying, oh, I took my teeth dog teeth cleaning, how much did it cost me? $700, right? Anywhere from $700 to $1,200 if your dog doesn't have any complications. So if you think about it, with all the shots and the teeth cleaning once a year, that's $1,000 right there, right? Whereas if you use the Banfield subscription, it is about $480 and it includes unlimited doctor's visits. Again, like I said before, it's 150 bucks a pop just to see a doctor. So that in alone in itself is completely worth it, right? So look up in your particular area, if you have a Banfield, if you have a Vetco, or if there's other vets that has a conglomerate, so to speak, where you can sign up for a subscription, I think it's much worth it than what the pet insurance wellness plans has to offer. So kind of jumping around here, um, when I adopted Toby, he's late over there, I can see him just knocked out, <laughs> but I'll insert a photo of him if you don't, haven't seen him before. And also, if you want to see my dog's shenanigans, I do have an Instagram for them. Uh, haven't updated recently, just been, life has been crazy, but it's to- Q Bullies Toby on Instagram. You can see what they're up to all the time. They're, they're crazy. I love them. Um, but Toby, when I first got him during COVID, he was a pandemic doggy, and I decided to put him on pet insurance, which took forever, but everything took forever around that time. Anyways, we got a full medical checkup because if you do sign up for a pet insurance, they do require you to submit a full doctor's report Uh, and like a physical exam of them. He had a lot of buildup on his teeth with, you know, tartar or anything. Doctor said, yeah, it's not, it's, you know, an observation. And basically, you know, a teeth cleaning would solve all of that problem, right? So I submitted the report. 
because I want to make sure he was on pet insurance before I put him through teeth cleaning in case anything happens, insurance would cover it. They rejected, well, they said they'll, they're will they happy to pro- provide the insurance for him, insurance policy for him, but w- because his teeth has tartar on it, it's a pre-existing condition. So they won't cover anything related to the teeth. And I just like, what? It's just the teeth cleaning, right? So I brought the, the rejection letter, uh, exclusion letter, so to speak, to the vet. She was so awesome. She was pissed off. She's like, that is not a pre-existing condition. It was just an observation that he had tartar buildup on his teeth. I was like, so can you help me? <laughs> She's like, uh, absolutely. She wrote up this long essay pretty much, which was kind of aggressive (laughs) from what I remember. I was like, damn girl. Um, She wrote up this whole entire letter and I submitted back to the Nationwide and they are like, okay, we'll take that exclusion out. There's nothing wrong with his teeth, right? So um, just be aware of that. Um, And also don't wait till your dog has an issue before you try to get, you know, in, an insurance policy because that's you know not how things work because like most insurance policies they will not cover pre-existing conditions etc cetera, etc cetera, depending on the situation i'm not by no means no medical expert but this is what i know of pet insurance get them on the insurance policy as soon as you can even as a puppy puppies are probably not that expensive um but you don't want to wait till because when you do apply for the insurance policy, there is a waiting period before you can use it before the policy is in force. So I forget what it is. It's either two weeks or one month. And obviously, if there's any issues with your dogs, you probably don't want to wait that long, right? They can't wait that long. So definitely don't wait till because I had a, a friend who uh, a friend's friend who reached out to me to ask for my advice when it comes to this. They found a mess on their dog and they didn't have pet insurance and they're like asking about pet insurance and I was just like, I'm sorry to tell you, I hope it's nothing, hope it's benign, but it's kind of too late for you to apply for pet insurance because that's considered a pre-existing condition. So all in all, I want to say for you to do your budgeting, again, I disclose that you have to do your own research. Hopefully my video gives you some guidance but you're looking at about $50 to $80 a month for pet insurance. And then for the Banfield, it should be about $30 to $40 a month. So let's just err on the higher side or average. You should expect to pay about $960 a year for both you know, sides of it. And the major medical insurance and then the wellness plan through you know, a vet like Banfield or Vetco. $960 a year. For me, I'm happy to pay that because if I didn't have that, I would have had to dish out, let's just say, just into two mm, procedures with the teeth and the TPLO itself, that would have been $8,000 right there. And then, of course, with the annual, you know, kind of visits with the teeth cleaning and the shots and the checkups, that would have been another $1,000 right there. So really, if you think about it, it kind of pays for itself um, than actually paying everything out of pocket. So I hope my math kind of makes sense to you, but um, I, maybe I'll put a little description down in the, uh, the, my notes in the description box for you so that you can kind of see how the math works. And for me, I really hope that this was helpful for you because I'm very passionate about dogs. I want to help everybody to make sure that they can be the best they can for their dogs because they are always the best for us, right? They give you the unconditional love round the clock. I'm going to start crying here. (laughs) But let me know down in the comments section. Do you have a pet? What kind of dog or cat do you have? Have you run into any issues? Share your story. Let's all learn from each other. So that way we can be as cost effective when it comes to taking care of our loved ones, including our pets here. So I really hope you enjoy. If you haven't subscribed, check out some of my more fun videos talking about purses and vlogs. Um, I'll put another video down for here, for you down here. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less than retail. I'll see you all next time.